Take your Bible and go to Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22. And uh, speak to you just a few moments tonight on uh, a topic that uh, is dear to my heart and soul. And it's one of my favorite places in the scripture because it's about a man of God. Uh, unlike any other man of God that you find, he was uh, <coughs> operating uh, in the character that God gave him. That wasn't perfect, but God still used him. Amen. And uh, I want to look at him tonight, but I want to look at a little phrase that the Lord spoke to him. And uh, it, it, it serves as a, a warning to you and I and what is actually going on in our lives. And uh, in Luke chapter 22, in verse 31, the Bible says here, <clears throat> and here Jesus is predicting that uh, Peter will deny him. And so when you look at the verse, in verse 31, the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you. I don't think there's a saved person on the face of the earth that the devil wouldn't like to have for a little while. Yeah. And he said uh, that he may sift you as wheat. Some of you may have been sifted as wheat. And the scripture says, but I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. Now when you got the Lord praying for you, that's the best thing that I can think of that can happen to anyone, but I am told as I study the scriptures and I have learned that he is our advocate and he's our go-between. Uh, and the adversary has to get through him to get to me. So the Lord says, I'm going to pray for thee. And he didn't say that you don't be tried. He said that thy faith fail not. And I suppose uh, when the Lord comes back, shall he find any faith. So he's praying for his faith. And when thou art converted, that word converted simply means a change or when you've, uh, you might say change gears. I don't think it's a reference to his salvation. Some folks see that and they say, well, he got saved. I don't think he was saved long before that. Amen. And what he says, in for, he says, when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. So he counts him as a brethren, going to help the brethren for what he's getting ready to go through. Uh, and he said unto him, Lord, I'm, I'm ready to go with thee, both into prison and to death. And he said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day before thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me. Look over, if you would, in the scriptures at verse 60. I'm going to fast forward here just a minute. And Peter said, man, I know not what thou sayest. And immediately, while he yet spake, the cock crew. I want to preach a message tonight with the title the cock crew. Amen. Now, this lowly bird appears to me as probably in the, uh, and I don't have the right terminology, but let me just say the chicken family of some kind. <clears throat> the bird family, because he's a cock and he crows. And to put it down to where me and you live, uh, just sounds like a rooster doing some crowing. Amen. Now, uh, I guess what I'm trying to say tonight is, What's going on in your barnyard? Yeah. And believe me, everybody's got a barnyard. I mean, a place where you live. And sometimes we got a well-swept, clean barnyard. <laughs> and sometimes we got a messy barnyard. Now, me growing up on a farm, a dairy farm at that, uh, there was a lot of sh sunshine to shovel around the farm if you know what I mean. <laughs> and on that farm, we had somewhere between our farm and grandparents' farm, 6,000 chickens laying hens. And we raised chickens and eggs. Then on that farm was 50 head of Holstein cattle that we milked morning and night. So we had an operating full-blown dairy farm, chicken farm, and we'd get chickens, as chickens will live so long and die, and you get more chickens in. And in that bunch of chickens, you couldn't always be sure that they'd all be little hens, little pullets. And you could tell about the time they got so big, because hens don't crow. 
roosters crow. And we could tell when those little ones would start trying to crow. You say, well, what would you do with the roosters? Well, uh, we didn't let them go on there. We segregated them out and fattened them up. And boy, chicken and dumpling sure is good, I'm telling you. <laughs> but tonight I want to preach on the cock crew. Amen. And uh, what's going on in your barnyard? When I look at this, this story could be about Peter. It is about Peter, but it could as well be about any one of us. Amen. But Peter is a magnificent character and that God called him to follow him, was an apostle, and the Lord used him mightily through his ministry, and he writes the first and second Peter. And there's much said about Peter throughout of the New Testament, the Gospels especially. But I find that Peter is of such character uh, and such a person that I put him on a, a higher plane than some of you than you and I travel sometime. I've, I've never walked on water, but Peter has. I mean, I've never had 3,000 people saved, uh, but Peter has. So you see what I'm saying? He's a man that God saw and God called and God saved, but there was a time in his life that he denied the Lord. Now, if he's on that level and spiritually walking with God, he was part of the inner circle, if yeah. you know what I'm saying. I, I mean, he was one of those men that God loved and, and, and took with him just a little further and that prayed with him. But if it could happen to Peter, Peter, and Peter could deny the Lord, and Peter could hear the cock crow when the Lord said you deny me, and when you deny me, uh, you'll hear the cock crow. Listen, if that could happen to a man like Peter, it sure could happen to the likes of you and I. Amen. Yep. So it could well be about you or I or anyone else that hears this. So take your Bible and go to Matthew chapter 14. Matthew 14. At 31. Matthew 14, 31, the Bible says this. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand. This is about when Peter wanted to get out of the boat. Said the Lord uh, stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. But that is the time that the, uh, they saw the Lord walking on the water. And Peter said, Bid me come to thee. And he got out of the boat. The rest of them didn't get out now. He got out of the boat and began to walk toward the Lord on the water, but took his eyes off the Lord and began to sink and would have probably drowned if the Lord hadn't saved him there that day. But I want you to notice what he said. He says, O thou of little faith. Now come back to our text where we were preaching and the very thing, but he must have had enough faith that the devil was interested in him and wanted to shift him and try his faith for the Lord reminds him when we're over there in Luke chapter 22 that the devil has a desire to shift thee and I'm going to pray for thy faith that thy faith fail not. When I seen that I thought, man, if one thing I'm lacking in, it's faith. You say, well, how are you going to strengthen your faith? By the Word of God. And you get in the Word of God, you stay in the Word of God. Now, they didn't have the completed Word of God like we have today. But they had the Lord with them who spoke. And every time he spoke, it was the Word of God. So his faith was going to be tried. I want to notice a few things about him tonight, just a few. And then I'll draw you an illustration. It's only an illustration. Uh, and the question that I'm asking is what's going on in your barnyard? Or you could say what's going on in your home? What's going on uh, where you live? And so this evening, as we notice Peter, if you look at verse 31 through 34 where we were, you pick up the thought that he was of a fleshly confidence. Because he says there, when the Lord called his name and said, Satan hath desired to have you that he may shift you as wheat. Peter says, but I have prayed, or the Lord says, but I have prayed for thy faith, that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. And he said unto him, Lord, this is Peter talking, I am ready to go with thee both into prison and to death. And he said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day before thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me. 
I want to point up the fact that he was full of a fleshly confidence. And if this man of God that uh, got out of the boat to walk on water one time, it's the same man that preached over there when there was 3,000 saved and another time and then begin to write the first and second epistles of the book of Peter. He's the man uh, that God's talking about here. But this man was full of fleshly confidence. And brother, if he can be full of that, yeah. you and I can be full of that. And we got to watch who we are and what we are and not take such a high esteem of ourself, of our ability, of our talents, because in that esteem, uh, we in our fleshly confidence will deny our Lord Jesus Christ. That's not a good position to be in tonight. I see something else about him in verse 31. The Lord is talking to him and he appears to be dull of hearing. When you look at verse 31, he couldn't hear what the Lord was saying, or if he could hear it, he wouldn't believe it. Now sometimes we can read it, it's the Word of God. We can hear it, the preacher preaches it, but we don't believe it could ever happen to us. I'm telling you tonight, it's very possible uh, that you would might deny the Lord someplace in your life. Said, oh, no, not me, preacher. You don't know me, man. I, I mean, I got my ducks in a row. You, I tell you what, you better be careful because you're full of fleshly confidence. Your confidence better be in the Lord. You better be saying something like, well, by the grace of God, I want to live for God. I don't want to. I mean, you better bow down and, and cry holy, and you better be humble before the Lord. But Peter wasn't this way. And let me say this. A lot of today's Christianity is not that way today. Now, as Peter was a little dull of hearing, the Lord was talking to him and the Lord was right there. Now when the Lord is right there, that's better than getting it right out of the Word of God. So how many times have you read the Word of God? Oh, that, that, ain't, that ain't talking to me right That ain't talking to me right there. It might be talking to you. You're reading it, but you ain't believing it. Our problem today is just simply believing what God says. He can say it, and in us not believing it, or not minding it, or not doing it, we in essence are saying we're okay, but we are denying the Lord God. Now, let me point something else up about him. The lack of praying or of prayer uh, in Luke twenty-two forty-five. look at this. This whole account, and I didn't want to read every verse, but look at verse 45. He says, and now Jesus here has entered into the garden to pray at 39 and 40. And uh, he says uh, in verse 40, when he was at the place, he said unto them, pray that ye enter not into temptation. And he was withdrawn from them about a, a stone's cast. So he walked a further and kneeled down and prayed saying, Father, if thou, it will, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat was as it were the great, great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And when he rose up from the prayer and was come to his disciples, he found them sleeping for sorrow. I know something else about Peter, this man of God, who is probably greater than anybody in this room. He lacked in praying and prayer. For when he should have been praying because his Lord was there with him, just a stone's cast away, a praying like he had never prayed before to the Father because he was getting ready to go to Calvary. He was getting ready to die for the sins of the whole world. Peter, the, the man that was part of the inner circle, was asleep because of sorrow. He was sleeping when he should have been praying. Could I say this tonight? A lot of Christians today are sleeping when they should have been praying. Could I say this? A lot of pastors are sleeping when they should have been praying. Amen. Amen. A lot of missionaries are sleeping when they should have been praying. A lot of evangelists are sleeping when they should have been praying. Our nation is sleeping when it should be praying. Amen. Yeah, what's going on in your barnyard? He lacked Praying and prayer in his life. Watch verse 54. As you go down through the dialogue, there's many things that happen. And I've just selected five or six, maybe seven little things here to show you before I bring the illustration. But he says uh, here, 
in verse 54, as, as, as this thing begins to unravel, then took they him and led him and brought him into a high priest's house and Peter followed afar off. I find something else about the man Peter. Uh, they were taking the Lord uh, to falsely accuse him and that Peter was there, but he was following afar off, walking afar off. Here's a man uh, that uh, the Lord chose. Here's a man uh, that had the power of God uh, to heal the sick and, and to do all manner of things that the apostles did when they followed the Lord. But now he's the man that boasted his Lord, I'm ready to go with thee wherever thou go. But he's walking afar off. I wonder tonight how close to God you're walking. I wonder tonight could you walk a little closer with the Lord than you walk? If we really knew what kind of relationship you had tonight with the Lord, would it be one that's becoming to the Lord or one that was like John who rests upon his bosom? Or would you be like Peter here, walking afar off, but claiming to be the Lord? So in verse 54, it's very indictment. Look at verse 55. And when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the hall and were set down together. Now that's, that's that worldly crowd. Uh, Peter sat down among them. You've got a man that's called a Christian. You've got a man that knew and knows the Lord Jesus Christ. You've got a man that has the call of God upon his life, who, who walked on water one time, uh, who done all sorts of things, uh, and he was bold, and here all of a sudden he's warming his hands at the enemy's fire. What's going on in his life? Could I ask tonight, are you comfortable at the enemy's fire? Are you comfortable around the world and, and, and with the world's comforts? Are you comfortable with the world? He was comfortable warming himself by the enemy's fire. Say, so what was he doing? He was denying the Lord. That's what he was doing. Now watch in verse 57 as this unfolds. In verse 56, a certain maid beheld him and sat by the, that sat by the fire as he sat by the fire and earnestly looked upon him and said, this man was also with him. She identified him. Now that's how it is when you get out in the world. Well, don't you go to the church up there on the corner? Oh man, I don't go up there. That bunch of kooks up there. I don't go up there. And that's about how we are when we get to work or when we get in the grocery store or we go to the hardware store or we got to talk to somebody down on the street corner. Hey, don't you go up and then I see you up at that church Sunday up there. Don't you go up there with a bunch of crackpots up there. No, I don't go up there. No, I would be found with them people. He was warming himself by the enemy's fire in verse 55. Verse 56, verse 57, and he denied him, saying, Woman, I know him not. Do you understand how low he stooped when he said that? Do you understand what was going on in his heart when he said and denied the Lord his God? He was blind. The devil was sifting him at that time. He was running him through the sieve, if you please. But the Lord had prayed for his faith. The Lord knows his own. He knew what he was going to go through because the Lord himself was going through that awful time after the agony in the garden of prayer. But Peter, when he should have been standing up for the Lord, Amen. denied that he even knew the Lord. seventh point I've given you here is there was a true conviction to change. Not 10 years down the road. Not 25 years down the road. Not six months after it happened. Amen. Brother, it happened uh, just a few minutes, just a little time after that he realized what had happened. Look in your Bible if you would. He says there in 59, and he says, And about the space of one hour, uh, after another confidently affirmed saying of a truth, this fellow also was with him, for he is a Galilean. And Peter says, Man, I know not what thou sayest. And immediately, while he yet spake, the cock crew. 
true. And the Bible says, And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter, and Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said unto him, Before the cock crew, thou shalt deny me thrice. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. How somebody could stay back sitting on God for 25 years is beyond my comprehension. Brother, uh, when you get out of fellowship with God and you get back around the word of God and the people of God and the men of God, you should immediately want to get back in favor with your Lord and Savior. Amen. What I want to show you here is the cock crew. Oh my. You talk about a powerful message preached that night. God didn't choose any of the eloquent speakers that he had chosen. He didn't go get his brother to tell him. He didn't get John who loved him to tell him. He didn't send word by a messenger or an angel. He told a little lowly cock, it's time for you to crow. And brother, that little rooster, uh, wherever he was at, uh, in about that time, uh, perched himself up high. It must have been about the crack of dawn. And he began to crow. And when he crowed, brother, all those memories come flooding back to the man Peter. And brother, it was one of the most powerful messages he'd ever heard in his life. The cock crew in his life. And brother, it brought him to his knees. It brought him to repentance. And he turned back to the Lord Jesus Christ. Now let me say this. You better thank God for the times that you've heard the cock crow in your life. Because if he's not crowing, you may not be none of his. Huh? And I look at this. I see that in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 5, 6, and 7. Peter says this later in his life because he knew of the power of God to keep him. He says, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time, wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptation, that the trial of your faith, he knew about the trial of his faith. He was being shifted, being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Does that sound like a man that didn't know God? That sounds like a man that got sifted and when he heard the preaching of the rooster got right with God in the same hour, yes. went out and wept bitterly. Brother, if some don't touch your soul when the Holy Ghost of God reminds you through the preaching of some yes. preacher, through the preaching of some Sunday school teacher, through the preaching of some evangelist, through the preaching of some other servant that God may send, it might even be a rooster uh, that you are belong to him and you've denied him and you don't get right there. Something wrong with what you got. Amen. Yes. What's going on in your barnyard? Yeah. Yeah. Now, let me point this up and I'll draw the picture. There's a difference. Peter denied the Lord and the cock crew. I bet he's I bet he told about that a little later on in his ministry. He says, man, I'll tell you, thank God, thank the Lord. He said, I didn't know what I was doing. The devil had a hold of me and I didn't even have the, the sense to know. I know the Lord said one time, Satan, get thee behind me. And, you know, I just, you know, I, I understand the Lord. He knows all things and he is all things and he's omnipotent. But, man, I just didn't think that it was going to go out just like it did. But one time he said, man, I just wasn't sure what happened. One time my faith failed me and I began to sink. And, man, I got over there and, and the Lord stretched out his hand and pulled me up. He saved me. I got back in the boat. We was on the shore in the wind. I mean, he told all the stories, but let me tell you about a time, uh, brother, they was they was uh, falsely accusing my Lord and Savior and he was there. I was warming my hands by the enemy, making myself comfortable. I was doing all that stuff over there and brother, I denied when a little maid got up there and said, you're one of them. You're a Galilean. I denied that I even knew him. I didn't know what I was saying. Something come over me. I mean, the devil had a hold of me and all of a sudden that rooster crowed. That is the best one point message I ever heard. Because it brought me to my senses. But it is something how preaching will bring you to your senses, man. The Word of God will bring you to your senses if you just listen to what God is trying. What's going on in your barnyard today? Peter denied the Lord and the cock crew. If you can hear a cock crowing today, you better thank God. 
Now Judas, like Peter, denied the Lord. But no cock crew. No cock crew. And I, I'm preaching on the cock crew. But when Judas denied the Lord and betrayed him with a kiss, there was no rooster crowing anywhere. Judas, he kissed the door of heaven and went to hell. Yeah. Peter had gone through the door and knew the Lord. Peter had true repentance to the Lord. Judas had repentance to those he took the 30 pieces of silver from and went out and hanged himself. So if you can't hear the cock crowing tonight, you might have the repentance that Judas had and not the repentance that Peter had. I'm glad the cock crew. Tonight, my question is, we're more lowly than the man Peter, I would say. Even an apostle, followed the Lord, done great and mighty things. The apostle to the circumcision. I'm just a lowly evangelist in the 21st century. And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna bore you with the times I've denied the Lord. But I am gonna tell you this, I'm glad I could hear the cock crowing. Amen. And I could go weep bitterly and get it right with my Lord and Savior. I want to draw you a picture tonight. We'll have some music in a moment. I'll get started here.
what's going on in your barnyard. You know, Judas probably owned a rooster. Ever think about that? He probably enjoyed the produce and the fruits from the from the farm. I think everybody has a barnyard. Um, I don't think it just Judas and just Peter, just those people that were there. But one thing for certain, if he didn't have one, he probably lived close to somebody that did. Did you ever hear the neighbor's rooster crow? Yeah. I sure have. And But that day that Judas betrayed the Lord, there wasn't no rooster crowing that day. But thank God, the day that Peter denied the Lord, there was a, a cock, the Bible says, that crew. And it reminded Peter and woke him up to the fact that he had denied the Lord. Sometimes it'd be the funniest thing that'll wake you up to what's going on in your barnyard. Now today, I've just drawn a crude illustration here of a barnyard. See, back home on the farm, we had two silos and a shed out there. We fed cattle and we had an old red barn. Now that old red barn, uh, there were chickens, there were all kinds of things, but it was a common thing to hear a rooster crow in the morning. Little did I know that one day down the road, God would bring back to my memory about an early morning sunrise when Peter denied the Lord, the cock crew, and brought him back to his senses. And it sure worked in his life because he went on to preach and there were 3,000 souls added to the church. He went on to have a great and mighty ministry. And he went on uh, that the God is the God of a second chance. And if you can hear the cock crowing tonight, you better pay attention and thank God that you belong to God. And there's a rooster crowing bringing you your senses. Now for some people that's all they'll see. They ain't going to see nothing else. You say why? Because there ain't nothing else. Judas that's all he had. You know what? You and I might have something else. And brother when the sun sets and the dark hour comes and the sea is tempestuous and brother you've had about all you can take and you're about ready to throw in the towel and although you've boastfully said I won't deny you I'll go to all the way I'll even go to death somewhere in there you may deny the Lord you better thank God when the sun comes up in the morning Amen. Yeah. there's a rooster Amen. sent by God to crow and remind you that you belong to the Lord. You better go out and weep bitterly and get right with God because God ain't done with you yet. He wants to use you and keep you for himself. You know when that thing was over, over a little while later, Peter said, I went a-fishing. And he went out, went fishing naked. But after the Lord was resurrected and he appeared to those and he said, oh yeah, and bring Peter yeah. also. Yeah. God wasn't done with him. If you've denied the Lord, he ain't done with you. Amen. Thank God there's some rooster crowing yeah. in your life. I may not be nothing but a rooster. Preacher might be nothing but a rooster crowing in your life. Amen. Listen and hear the cock crow. In your darkest night, when that sun and it's going to rise, comes up in the morning on that old farm setting, There'll be some old scrawny, banny little rooster. I mean, who'd ever thought he'd preach one of the most powerful message anybody ever heard in the Word of God? Is there a cock crowing in your life? I'm going to ask for the lights. It's a thing of faith. 
He's there and now he's gone. It's a thing of faith. Tonight, can you hear the Lord speaking to your heart? You better thank God. God still deals with old sinners. Amen. I'm going to ask the young lady to come and play something on the piano. And if you have a need tonight, maybe you just think somewhere down the road, I might deny the Lord and I don't want to deny the Lord. And just get on your face before the Lord and thank God for roosters tonight. Man, thank God for roosters. As she plays, if there's a need, you surely can come. Mm -hmm.